Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm going to do a recap ranking, I guess, ranking or rating, grading of the of each team in the NHL for their free agent best day in the land day yesterday on the 28th. Woo, is that fun? I did five already. We're going to do five more. Going to be doing it right away. Go check out Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. If you like every team, every four major sports in every team, we run them all just like we're doing right here. I'm the hockey guy. No, I'm not. There's a guy that's called that. I shouldn't do that. And I do a show called the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. You can check it out in the evening tonight on the 29th at... Uh, 7.30 to 9.30, it's interactive. We just discuss everything that's going on. Tonight's is going to be pretty cray-cray because there was a lot of stuff going on. All right, so let's go look at it. All right, we're starting with the Chicago Blackhawks. The Chicago Blackhawks uh, signed uh, Juhar Kaira. Uh, to a two-year 975K. They need size there. Uh, they have a lot of smaller players, and their bigger players don't really play all that big. So he's good to have. I wouldn't play him higher than the fourth line, though, if he can all at all help it. He's not the greatest skater in the world, but uh, he can drive to the net. He doesn't really hurt you that bad on the ice. He doesn't usually take bad penalties. I know because I live in Edmonton, Alberta, and he was in Edmonton Oil for the last few years. He's okay. Not a bad sign. Seth Jones, eight years, $9.5 million. I talked about the Seth trade in uh, previous videos if you want to check those out. Okay. We'll see. I'm giving it to, uh, to Scotty and uh, Stan Bowman here as they are, well, Certainly his father, Scotty, is one of the most intelligent uh, minds in hockey. Greatest minds in hockey all time. Possibly the greatest mind of hockey all time. He didn't play well the last two years in Colorado. Or Columbus, I should say. So um, that could be a lot of factors to do with that. And I imagine they think that they can turn that around. But his defense was poor. Offense was okay. You're going to need a lot more than defense is poor, offense okay for $9.5 million for eight years, right? So I imagine they'll turn them around. It's interesting. Uh, Jake McCabe, four years, $4 million. Fantastic deal. I really love Jake McCabe. I hear a lot of people think it's an overpayment. I don't know. I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey. So I watched Buffalo last year a lot. Believe it. I watched every team a lot. And I watched Buffalo a lot. Uh, he was hurt as well. And I watched a year before that. The guy is really an ex a good defenseman. He's a very good defenseman. You're going to love him. He's better than Zadarov, who you just jettisoned off by a lot. So be very happy with that pickup, I would say. And then, of course, we know there's also the uh, uh, Flurry. Flurry. You got Flurry. Wow. 36-year-old Flurry, not happy that he was traded. Not happy at all. Uh, they're going to have to convince him to come and play. Uh, I imagine they'll probably sign him up for some term there, too, for a couple of years. They got Kevin Lankin in there, and they want him to become a winner. And you can't do it much better than having Marc-Andre Flurry by your side. I'll tell you that right now. So they're going to have to do some schmoozing because I think he wanted to go to Pittsburgh, if anywhere. Maybe, and I thought I thought this possible, that they got him thinking if they couldn't get him there, they could retain some money and send him to Pittsburgh and get a pretty decent package back. I think that may happen. I, I'm not sure. But um, like I said, uh, Seth Jones, uh, that, what, what did this? This gave them like no cap space after this, did they? I wanted to see that. Projected cap space, $0. They have $0. So this is pretty much your team unless they move things around, like say what I talked about about Marc-Andre Fleury, but they're still going to need a goaltender. They still got to sign Brandon Hagel and Alex Nylander. So there's going to be some more movement here in Chicago. 
All right, my rank, my uh, ranking, my grade, grade is a better way for their pickup, right? For their pickup so far this year and end in the free agency. For McCabe, I'm giving an A. For Jones, I'm giving a B. And I'm giving that because I'm trusting the Bowmans. Honestly, I think it's about a C, actually, unless he turns turns it around and plays a lot better than he has than he has. Uh, and Flurry, I'm giving an A, but the the other thing, let's go look at their depth chart here. The other thing we have here is uh, it's a strong. Oh, I forgot about the Tyler Johnson acquisition. That was fantastic. They did really well with that acquisition, getting a second round draft pick to go with it. Uh, good good pick up there. So, on paper, the question is, is this team ready to go for it? Are they going for it? They're still young. Debrinkat, Dirk Kirby Doc is a beast. Love, 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 love. Uh, Jonathan Taze is 33. If he's better than playing at the 40, 50-point pace that he was before, not too shabby. Kubalik's got a blistering shot. And then Tyler Johnson's a great passer. You got some size. You got. I, I think their overall depth and offense is very good. Do I put them as a contender, though? DeHaan, Jones, McCabe, Murphy, Stillman, Mitchell? No, I don't. Not yet. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. They could make the playoffs. That division is wacko. There's only, like, Nashville and – can't remember one other team that – is probably not going to make it. Besides that, any team can make it out of that division. So, And they just put themselves in a position where they can be one of the any teams. But can I? is it possible they don't make it? Sure, it's possible. It's still possible. Um, I, I, I think it, it's just going to be very interesting to watch. Anyways, for their whole uh, grade, I'm going to give them a B. I'm going to give them a B because as this team grows, it becomes more and more possible that they're a contender. So pretty cool stuff that the Bowmans are doing there. Pretty cool indeed. All right, let's look at the next one. Colorado Avalanche. Well, the only free agent they signed was uh, Roland McCown, who probably won't play. Um, but I guess the deal here is they lost Grubauer. It's more what they lost than what they got. They lost Graves and Expansion. But losing Grubauer, and then they go and trade a first-round pick and Timmons to get Darcy Kemper, which is probably better than Grubauer. You heard it here first. Darcy Kemper will do better than Grubauer next year, or at least as good. Then they'll probably be able to sign him for less than Grubauer because he's been floundering in Arizona, and his numbers haven't looked that great over there. They can make a case that he only can make like $5 million. So they save a million, and they possibly get the better goaltender. So not a bad deal. Uh, McCard, uh, McCard, Johnson. Johnson should be back. So losing, uh, what's his name that I just, Graves, was not, if Johnson's back, that makes up for it. The big thing for me is actually losing Timmons is pretty big. They got Curtis McDermott in a trade from Seattle. I wouldn't want to be playing him in your top six. And I don't see anybody. So I think they're not done adding here in Colorado. However, they only have $8 million in cap space. Um, interesting moves. Now, the question is, what do I give them for a grade? It's a tough one. I think I'm going to give them a C plus for uh, because they got to sign McKinnon in two years. They got to sign Pot, either sign or Phil Burakovsky, JT Comfer, Nachushkin. They got a lot of money going out in the next couple of years. Bowen Byram's going to be huge. Oh, sorry, I'm going to give them a B, maybe plus because that Kale McCarr signing was awesome. 2023-24, that $9 million for Kale McCarr is going to look stupid. It's going to be like, that's all he's making? Seriously? Great deal. For six years? Awesome. Okay, let's look at their depth chart. 
Uh, it's still a pretty pretty solid team. Oh, they just signed Darren Helm to play on the third line there, probably fourth line. Um, uh, they also have Martin Kaut and Ra Sample Ranta that could be ready right away. Gilbert, Dennis Gilbert has has done well when up. And uh, Roland McCallan, he's only 25 years old. He was a first-round pick by the LA Kings, I believe, or was it the Carolina Hurricanes? One of the two. Anyways, he could be just a late bloomer. I wouldn't doubt that he's able to play now. So they got they have some pretty good depth. And uh, still a pretty darn good team. So I'm going to give them a B. Alex Newhook, I forgot about that. Got to have Al Alex Newhook in there. Um, and they did sign Landeskog to seven million for eight, and I thought that was a great deal. So I'm going to give him a B, B plus, something like that. Uh, next one, we got Columbus Blue Jackets. I I thought Columbus did absolutely fantastic. Not necessarily to do with free agents, but they signed Patrick Laine to one year, seven point five, uh, to a show me contract. Um. We'll talk about the trades that happened here. Boone Jenner, four years, 3.75. Tain, nothing wrong with that. Boone Jenner is freaking gold, man. I love him. I'd have him on my team all day long. The guy does everything you want physically, competitively. I just freaking love the dude. So, yeah, uh, 3.75 for four years. i pay that all day. Sean Corrali, watch out for Sean Corrali. Four years, 2.5 million. He's one of those guys that does all the little things right. A good third-line winger that may have some offense still sitting there that has kind of run stagnant in Boston. I just have that feeling. He's got speed. Um, I think it's, for $2.5 I think it's a pretty solid play. Really solid play. So, so far, I'm giving them high marks here. Eric Robinson, um, nothing wrong with that. 800000 for two years. Big guy. Skate's not bad for a big guy can play he's still got upside so i i like it and tessier for uh two years 1.525 uh million per or sorry was robinson 1.6 million per that might be a little steep actually because tessier at 1.5 i like tessier let's go look at this uh, i i think they got i think they did well they kept everybody down they didn't really have all much leverage but not, no cap hit problems. These are good players. I, th I think they, they did pretty well. Um, now, they did trade for Jacob Orchek, as you know. Uh, I knew I was going to forget his name. It'll come to me. Atkinson. Jeez. Atkinson. Traded for Atkinson, Jacob I like this trade that they needed a passer for Patrick Lyon. Eh? And then when I said it's a show me contract, I think it's a show me contract for Patrick Lyon eh, too. He wants them to show him that this team is going to grow fast, build fast. Uh, with Keka Lyon in there, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Yeah, this goes a lot faster than you think. Um, so it's not a bad trade. I, it's high, $8 million, but it's only for three more years. And Jacob Borchek has put up some really good points. Go check out his stats. It's not bad. I'd show you now, but I'm busy. <laughs> uh, like I said, I like the Boone Jenner, Jenner signing. Um, the other things that they did here was get Jake Bean for a second-round pick. And they got Boquist back and a whole bunch of picks for Jones. I am giving them an A. Bo uh, you're going to love Adam Boquist, by the way. He's only 20 years old. The guy is ready now. He is a whole package defenseman. You're going to like him. He can skate. He's I, He's got more offense in him than he's showed so far. I wouldn't doubt if he plays in your top two. He's that good. Uh, I, I thought it was a great acquisition. I think he could end up being every bit as good as Jones, assuming Jones doesn't progress like I, I mentioned before as much as he can. He has the ability to do. Uh, but we'll see because, uh, like I said, Jones last year – the last two years did not play very well in Columbus. Let's look at their depth charts. So you got Lion A. You're going to have to. I, how many? First of all, shoot, I forgot to check how much cap space they have. Most important thing cap space. 
They have 14 million in projected cap space, and they do get to sign Jake Bean, and Peak won't cost them very much. So not bad for this year. Uh, next year when they got to re-sign Lion and all that, that could be a problem. But they've got a little room this year. To, and I think they're going to have to use it if they want to keep Lion A. they got to get a better center than Razlovic, a better playmaking center. I wonder, I keep on thinking Krejci out of Boston. I, I keep on thinking that he's a perfect playmaker type guy. And then you'd have, I would play Voracek with uh, Lion A, not Bjorkstrand. I'd put Bjorkstrand down here. Gustav Nyquist is a question mark. He has didn't play at all last year, but I if if they can't get uh, if Boston can't sign Krejci, I'd be taking a look at that to make Lion A happy. I don't think playing with Jack Roslovich as your center is going to make Lion A happy all that much. Um, Tessier, Corrali, Bemstrom. Tessier's got more offense in him than that. I think Nyquist is going to be down here in that. And Tessier will be up there, even though Nyquist really is kind of a mad type player. One of the few bad signings I've seen Columbus do. And then Wierenski, Boquist, see, they do have him in the top, playing on the top. Gavrikok, Peak, and Dabin, and Kukan. Feels like another defenseman would be good here. We'll see what they do for the rest of the summer. But this team, is a, I don't think it's looking to make the playoffs this year. Just be very competitive. Grab as many more picks as they can real quick. Because uh, Columbus, uh, I don't think they, they, they can afford to be like a five-year rebuild team. So I think they'll go one more year. It's a pretty solid draft. And then you'll see start seeing them add, do some surprising, crazy stuff. They did really good jetting Kent Johnson and Cole Sillinger. But I'm going to give them a uh, give him an A for picking up some really solid pieces to do a really quick rebuild. All right, let's go to the that's no uh, Keskalainen. Keskalainen. All right, you got a little something in your Keskalainen. Uh, Dallas Stars. First of all, this isn't all of them. They just made some moves today. Uh, we'll see that when they go. They they picked up some free agents today. But uh, solid, solid. I'm going to give him a B plus. Ryan Suter, excellent. The guy's got so much more legs. Uh, he's playing on a veteran team, which I really think is good for Ryan Suter. He's, he's, uh, he's kind of a loner guy. He's nice to everybody, but he's not like rah-rah. And he's certainly not about you know, bringing up young guys and stuff like that. It's not his thing. I think he found a really good team for himself here. Will he be good enough by the time he's 40? Probably, knowing him. But it doesn't matter right now because Dallas's window is right now. Uh, Braden Holpe for one year. I think Hudobin's out. Uh, bringing in Holpe. I don't know. We'll see how he does there. I, he's kind of been an attitude everywhere. It's what I don't like about it. I don't know what bonus didn't like about Hudobin, but I don't know if he's gonna like Holpe too much either. So I'm gonna I'm and Glenn Denning at 1.5 for two years. I think it's a little steep, uh, but he's a great face-off guy. Uh, I think it's just a little steep for a fourth fourth liner. He does all the little things well. He's just one of those guys that never makes mistakes. So so maybe maybe I kind of get it. Uh, and it adds like crazy depth to this team. So let's look at the depth to this team, right? Uh, first of all, I don't think they have like any cap space. Where the heck is it? Zero dollars right there. That's why I couldn't find it. It was non-existent. They don't have any cap space at all. Next year, they're going to have to sign Klingberg. They don't have to sign Como. Maybe Radulov and Pavelski. Uh, things could be turning around a little bit next year. They might start looking at getting younger next year instead of paying those contracts out. It's all going to depend on this year. This year is everything for Dallas. They got a full year. Uh, COVID is over. 
They got a, a, a veteran laden team. They got a young guy like Jason Robertson, who they're going to have to pay next year as well. So that was almost rookie of the year. Um, this is the year, I think. By the way, Miro Heiskanen at 8 4 forever. Well done. Well done. That is a freaking awesome signing. That's just a little bit less than. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that eight? Wow. That is fantastic. That's a little bit less than Makar for a longer period of time. That's going to look really good at the end of that contract. Um, Ryan Suter fits in here perfectly with, uh, well, I guess they signed, yeah, they signed Hockenpah, Sekera, either, or he's skin in. Solid defense. And picking up, you're going to love Yanni Hockenpah. You want to talk about a guy that just oozes character at $1.5 million as well? And that's what they did. This team is full of character. Tons of character, guys. Um, I, I'm giving them a B plus for what they did. Did I already give them a grade and then change the grade? I hope not. Tell me in the comment section if I did. <laughs> Let's look at their depth chart real quick. Uh Please be, for Dallas' sake, uh, Sagan, I hope you're okay. I mean, he's played through some brutal injuries. This The tough part with Dallas is are they going to be able to hold it together for a full season? They got a lot of guys here. Radulov's 35. Sagan was pretty beat up. Jamie Benn has not been getting better with age, and he's 32 years old. Uh, Jason Robertson looks like he's a rock. And that Ropel hints, I'm sure he'll be fine. 6'3, 220. They got some decent young players. Pavelski seems to never age. Uh, and then Como Faxo Faxo. You really want Gurian up higher than that. Can't be playing him down there on the third line. Probably want to put Pavelski there as he's getting 37, 38 years old this year. And really give Gurian up a good run this time. If he doesn't work, trade him off. I know Gurian's been like very inconsistent for Dallas. And Kivertanov, Glenn Danning. And then they did a sneaky little pickup of Raffle. You're going to like him too. All of these guys are impeccable character players. And that's the reason why Dallas made it to the final. One of the reasons why Dallas made it to the finals two years ago. is this: there's no need to, uh, it's a low maintenance roster that you just go out and play hard. Everybody plays for each other. Uh, it's, it's, it's great that way. Um, they got to have Ottinger. Ottinger is the other reason why Dallas could really make a run this year. Ah, that kid is insane. Watch them to trade for trade Hudobin. Uh, watch. Okay. Ty Delandria. I think he's going to play. I don't know where he's going to find a spot. Now he probably, he'll probably beat out Raffle. And then Raffle will play where injuries are. The thing about Raffle is he can play anywhere. He can play left wing, right wing. Like, you can mix and match him everywhere. And uh, I, I really got to – maybe they'll put him down in the minors and get that offense going a little bit. Not a bad idea for Delandria. All right. That's it for that. We got one more to go. I'm skipping Detroit. I'm going to do it later. Edmonton Oilers. Zach Hyman, seven years, five point five million per. I'm totally on the fence about this play. Zach Hyman is the selkie possibility as a winger. He's one of the best, probably top five defensive wingers in the game. And uh, that's the reason why I, I don't mind this deal. I just think that even if his offense falls apart, you still got an extremely good. Uh, lockdown winger at 5.5 near the end of this contract, which by the end of this contract, 5.5 probably won't look all that bad. He's going to play with McDavid. He's going to put up points like that. He, he, he got, he, you know, he was fortunate to play with Matthews, Marner and Toronto that really padded the stats. I don't think he's really a 60 point guy. He's probably more about 35 to 50, somewhere around there. Somewhere around 45 points, but he gives you solid, solid, solid all-around play. So I don't mind the deal. I had to think about it, but I don't mind the deal. Derek Ryan, two years, 1.25. I'm okay with it. I mean, 
He's just an okay player. He doesn't really do much of anything great. It's okay. It's a filler spot. I, I might even go as far as to say it was a little high at 1.25. But Tyson Berry, three years, 4.5. We're going to talk about this a bit more. I am really – and Cody CC at four years, 3.25. He had a good year in Pittsburgh. He was a basket case in Toronto and Ottawa. How is he going to be now? And we're going to go look at the roster now. How is he going to be now? Oh, we for, oh we, don't forget about the Warren Fogel trade for Bear. I don't like it because I know what, what the perceived Warren Fogel is like a Coleman. But if he was really that and I watched him, I didn't see him as that. I saw him as a go down the wing and, and cut to the net type of guy. He doesn't have much creativity at all. Uh, Brendan Moore obviously didn't think he was worth another contract that was significant enough. So, and Brendan Moore is one of the smartest guys and, and one and one of the was one of the best two way forwards in the NHL. So, not a big fan. But I hear that Bear had some conditioning issues where he came out, came into camp out of shape like two out of four years. So that's a problem. It may work out. I want it to work out, but uh, I'm not really a huge fan of it. Um, the main thing with me here is uh, I think you'd have to go to the depth chart really to get the grasp of this. Okay, first of all, Smith at 2.2 per is very risky. He's a 40-year-old goaltender, and I know he's a beast. He's a warrior. I love Smith. Nobody talked more about Smith than when he was in Arizona and everybody laughed at me, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, man. The guy is a freaking beast. And he could still do it now. I, I wouldn't put anything past the dude, but is that is he really the guy who's going to bring it to the promised land when you got Miko Koskinen still in here? My ranking is a C-. minus. My rating is a C-, minus, possibly even a D. Uh, let's look at the depth chart, and I'll kind of explain why a little bit. Hyman, Connor, McDavid, and Pooley Harvey. Now, you don't have Marner there. Marner used to be the Hyman. Just dig it out of the corner, get it to Marner. Marner get it to Matthews, and they score. Pooley Harvey's not going to do that. Pooley Harvey is a slot guy. You go. You got to find him in the slot so you can pass it out to him, and he's got a killer shot. Is Zach Hyman able going to be able to do that? He had the one of the most second assists in the NHL last year. I think it'll be okay on that line, but don't play him lower because his numbers are not going to look good for the money he's making if you play him lower than that. But defensively, he's a beast. So Nugent Hopkins, Drysaitel, and Yamamoto. Um, it's that's that line worked before. I'm I'm still not on Yamamoto, but he's 22. He's still young. He's still got upside, but I'm not a huge fan. I thought he was going to be a lot better offensively by now than he is. Is what I'm saying. And he's still only 153 pounds. Gamer, oh, the guy will go into the areas. He's fearless. I love that about him, and that's 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 cool. But how long is that going to last for before he's on the IR all day? All, all the time. So, Fogel, Turris, and Cassian. Uh, Turris won't be there. There's no freaking way. They got to get another center. Oh, yeah, they got R Derek Ryan. Okay. Oh, yeah, play Derek Ryan up there. I don't care who you play up there, but not Turris. The only thing, the reason why you play Turris there is maybe they are going to go chase him around in the gym for summer. And that's what I would do. If it was me, like, if Bear came in out of shape, I'd be like, we're paying you a lot of freaking money. My, uh, we're gonna. Our uh, trainer will be knocking on your door every day until next season. Like I wouldn't do it right away, but if somebody comes in out of shape, absolutely. And if you don't like it and you have a bad attitude about it, we'll trade you away. But we're only trading you uh, as a person that's well conditioned. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna trade you as a lazy ass. So you're gonna. You're gonna become well conditioned. While you're working for me, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> Getting all pound the table, right? No. Uh, 
So, like I said about Fogel, we'll see. I don't think he's going to score more than he did right there. Probably, what, 15 goals, 15 assists, 30 points, maybe. Maybe. Uh, depending on the – got to remember, they played him higher up in the lineup quite a bit. He's probably not going to get that chance here. Unless, of course, Nugent Hopkins gets hurt and stuff like that. But I just didn't see him as that creative of a player. So we'll see how he turns out. Uh, and then Shore, Derek Ryan. But this is where the problem happens. They trade away Bear, who was probably one of on analytically was what was their best defensive defenseman last year, analytically speaking. And if you talk to Edmonton Oilers fans, if uh, Edmonton Oilers fans will tell you that he coughed up pucks and he got beat out in the neutral zone. Well, it didn't affect his analytics any. He played really well. Uh, again, like I said, though, if there's conditioning problems, then there is an issue there. Uh, but Darnell Nurse and Tyson Berry do not play those guys together. There's nobody playing defense. Darnell Nurse is not a great defensive player. He's a great offensive player. And he's probably just going to get better and better. But he's not. But he could get better at defense as well. But as it stands, he's not. And Barry is not. Barry is not. To talk about high amount of second assists. Barry was like three quarters of assists, I think. I might be over-exaggerating. We're second assist, but not by much, uh, because he's just passing it up to uh, McDavid, and he happens to get a point. Not a huge fan, especially at the at the amount of money they gave him. Duncan Keith in Chicago, every player that played with Duncan Keith played better when they weren't playing with him. And he was playing yes, twenty three minutes a night for Chicago, and. Uh, Holland says, like, he can play 23 minutes a night. Well, he's capable. A lot of players can, like, they're not going to die on the ice if they play 23 minutes a night. But I think if you played him 15 to 17 minutes a night, he probably would be a lot better for his partners. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to play him top four minutes, as Holland already said he was a top four player. So Cody Cece, I don't know. We'll see. He played okay in Pittsburgh. They got a system there that is very defenseman friendly. Their uh, their their forwards come back hardcore, hardcore, and this forward group better come back for this group hardcore. Or they're in trouble. Uh, how is he going to be in Toronto? They didn't do that for him, and he didn't look good. Ottawa didn't look good. So, three point two million for three years. It's I'm I'm on I I'm not a big fan. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I I'm gonna give him a we'll see. Chris Russell and Evan Bouchard. Uh I I think by the end of the year, Evan Bouchard will be up here. Uh I don't know. They've got we they see they, they have two defensemen coming up in Samarukov and Philip Broberg that I'm on the fence about Samaruk if he has no offense whatsoever. Yeah, he's going to play, but I think he's going to be about 24, 25 before he puts it all together. A lot of people think he's going to play right away. I don't. So this is what they got. And I'm seeing a team with very little defensive acumen. Scary. They're going to have to outshoot their opponents like 6-4. And, of course, the goaltending situation. I thought they might get Kemper. I would have been so happy. But they didn't, and I don't know what they're going to do now, but they need somebody better than Miko Koskinen, simple as that. That's my full 42, uh, boys and girls. That's the five teams. Hit the subscribe. By the way, if you do, I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. And the more you subscribe and the bigger we get this channel, we are getting closer and closer to the jet o frolic that will bring us all across the lands to all the hockey rinks. We're going to do it. Come into your land. And you're going to do a freaking Perlo dance with me. And we're going to go see a game together. This is the Perlo dance. Okay, bye.